Thanks, everyone. I am joined by County's Power Heat player, Takura Ngata Aringamati. Uh, con- congratulations, first of all, Takura, for being named in the Black Ferns just recently. Well, we've all been in lockdown, so uh, some very exciting news for you. But uh, we'll just start by getting you to give us a bit of a rundown of how, how lockdown has been for you. Um, kia ora whanau. Lockdown for me has uh, been really, really good. I've um, come back home to Kaitaias to... Um, I guess it's been my lockdown, so we're in level two at the moment. Um, but just in that time being in lockdown, um, it's been good to just, um, I guess, be in my own space to train and um, hit the roads safely. Um, yeah, and and just do our, our home workouts. It's been, um, yeah, been really good. All right, let's uh, find out a little bit about uh, your background. I'm told I need to ask you about playing against the county's power heat when you were with the Auckland Storm. I think you made your, your debut uh, with the Storm against the heat. Tell us a little bit about that story and how you ended up, I guess, in County's Monaco. Um, with the Storm, that we actually didn't have... Um, when I played with the Storm in 2012, that was my first and last cap, County's heat wasn't uh, made then. So we... Yeah, I didn't get to play against the County's heat, but we had... The Kansas Heat was made the following year, 2013. So we were, that's where I decided to um, come over from Auckland yeah. to Counties. What, what sort of made you make that transition? What was it about Counties Monaco that um, appealed? Well, it's, it's kind of a long story. I um, started rugby when I was five years old, playing with the boys, and um, I could only go up to, and that was at West Auckland um, with my Takere Rugby Club. And I could only go to, I think it was 16 years old. So then, from there, I needed to find something. You know, I, back, back then I just thought I, I wanted to be in the All Blacks. You know, I, I didn't know about Black Ferns team until I went to a women's team. So that women's team was Ponsonby. Um, met my first Black friend there, which was Linda Itunu. Um, Playing alongside her, I thought she was the best. And I just thought, man, yeah, that's, that's somewhere I want to be is Black Ferns one day. Um, but to get to there, you had to be in the Auckland Storm. And... Yeah, I was, I was 16 going into the women's team, so I didn't make I didn't make the Auckland Storm till I was 20, 21, um, and that that obviously meant that it was really hard to make with um, the people in my position at that time, and that was Fiat Ufau Musili, who um, yeah was a was a very um, I guess prestige player in the Black Ferns and. Obviously, has the foam, foam silly medal that you you win in the FPC. So yeah, being behind her and being behind Karina Stowers, they were the two hookers at the time in the storm. Um, and I was maybe the fourth hooker, so I, I, it was real hard for me to even be picked for a trial in that team through my years. Um, come to the time where I, when I finally cracked it. When I was 21 years old, um, I remember my first time jumping on the field and this was my first cap and I stepped over the line and the the whistle blew for full time. So waiting all those years and just grinding with my team and um, praying one day that I made it and then finally getting to make it but stepping on the field and it had finished. Um, Yeah, it was really, I guess, it was was really disappointing. It was really... um, uh, I, I don't know how I just kept going through years and years of just really trying to make that squad and just getting, um, I guess, no minutes, but still counted as a cap <laughs> for the storm. Um, so I guess that in that point of time, I moved out to South Auckland and, um, oh, the following year, sorry, 2013, I wasn't named in the storm at all. And I trialled for that year and I rang up one of my friends from, um, it was Aroha Savage and Rawinia Everett, who also played in the, in the storm, but started up along with others, the county's heat team. And I rang them up and said, oh man, I cannot getting, I didn't get selected for the teams that would your coach want me? And the coach at the time, it was Davida White and Daryl Susua. And I, yep, they... They got me to turn up the training and I ended up starting hooker for the county's team at that time and getting to play against Fiat Ufa Um we I think we lost every game in 2013 with counties, but 
um, to get that to get that chance to be playing it up against the best. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. And the following year, in 2014, I ended up being selected for from that 2013 season. I got selected for the Black Ferns. What was that experience sort of like? I mean, finding out that, you know, for all these years, I mean, your, your backstory is a little different to some of the other Heat players that we've spoken to who've got to rugby later in life. You had rugby in your life earlier. You've been through some of those hard years where women's rugby probably didn't get the opportunities and the recognition uh, it, it is now. How yes. much of a struggle was that for you? What did it mean to, to be named in the Black Ferns having had that goal for, for so long? Man, it, it meant the world to me. I, I remember crying on the phone, um, ringing my parents, who obviously went through all that, um, I guess, heartache, just seeing me not make teams and see me year after year, just really try hard with all my teams to make it to a FPC team. That was that was even making the FPC team. Well, I think it was NPC back then. It was it was such a big thing for me. Um, but you yeah, getting that call for the Black Friends was like yes. I, I can't believe it. I've actually, I guess, gone through a lot just to get there. And to finally get there was just awesome. And I always remember this quote from Linda Itunu. Um, she would say to me, she knew that I was, wasn't making teams. She really felt for me and being in Ponsonby and me not making the squads. And she just would, would say to me, you know, you don't need to be a black friend to play like a black friend. You know, and for her to see me, see that I am a black fern, um, in her eyes, just gave me that extra, I guess, extra push to keep going, that one day I will eventually make it. And, yeah, without my family and my friends, man, I didn't know I would have just given up, yeah. You, um, you have obviously been named again, as I said, um, in the 2021 Black Ferns squad to, to go up to the Northern Hemisphere. And it's a huge few months ahead with the World Cup looming large here in, in New Zealand. I mean, what would that mean to you? I mean, you obviously played a number of test matches now. You're, you're well entrenched in that team. But to play a World Cup at home in front of your fin- friends and family and, and on the back of what the Black Ferns did at the, the Olympics where they sort of almost stole the show um, in terms of the, the sporting interest here. What, what will that mean to you the next few months? I'll just be a awesome honour and privilege to be playing in front of all my family at home. Um, yeah, it was a significant call too this time around compared to all my other times. I think the very first call that I got, the, the um, nervousness that I felt back then and this call that I got just recently, yeah, I... I, I, I I guess being in the team for seven, this would be the seventh season with them. And to see, I guess, all the, you know, all the talent that Aotearoa have in positions such as hooker and in every other position and um, for a player that's been in there and to get that call was just like, man, we really work hard. We really need to work harder once you're in it to stay in it. And, yeah, to get that call, I was jumping up and down as if it was my... (laughs) Like my first time, you know, it was, um, yeah, I was just, I think I was just really proud of myself just that I, that I made it once again. Awesome. Um, listen, um, you obviously spent a couple of years recently playing for Northland, um, obviously up north at the moment too, and then coming back to the county's power heat this year, just what have you sort of noticed in terms of the difference? Obviously, they were really disappointed with the way the, the season sort of finished last year uh, with the mathematical equation catching sort of everyone out. Um, and, you know, fingers crossed we have a little bit more luck with with how it shakes out the next uh, next couple of weeks. But, you know, the notice that the difference from when you were last here to, to when you are here this year, the big differences? Yeah, very big difference. Um, Northland Cody, oh, in relation to how they are now, I'm talking about, Yep, yeah. Yeah, they, they've just come a long way from the beginning, um, from the support from the union. Um, just seeing, just being there from the beginning and um, instilling everything that I learned over my years of rugby with the leadership group and the coaching staff. Um, but counties, yeah, I, 
I believe that if, if I didn't learn what I learned with the Vida and Daryl through counties and the love and the belief that they had in the players back then, I think Northland wouldn't be where it is as a team. Um, everything I learned from there, I brought to Northland with my leaders. Leaders that were also used to play in counties. There was about six players, six of us that all came from counties and we all moved up north. And we all come together and played for Northland, and every all our values, all our the culture, the culture that we that we had there. The Cody are just flourishing with it, and they've taken it on board. And um, I was lucky to train with them last night. Since our team, our team can't train together, um, I've had to had to fall back on the on our Cody um, team and train with them so I can prep my body for. The tour coming through next to oh well we have camp in two weeks and yeah I'm just so lucky that they took me on board to be able to train with them to get that contact and and skills and and fitness um yes yeah, so I was lucky to train with them last night and I just I just sat back and I just looked at what was created in 2019 and I was just so so proud to see that the leaders and that the players were good you know it, it was. And I think that's what um, I didn't. I didn't know about about it back then. I didn't know why our David and Daryl were so so angry all the time about, <laughs> or just you know, just really passionate about. You know, we were thinking about five year plan of of how a union should be, and um, yeah. When last night I stood back and seen it and be like, shucks, that's why. That's why. They wanted us to be committed. That's why they wanted us to be here, there. Why they wanted us to just do one sport, not rugby league. Man, I used to have really big feuds with with um, David and Daryl about playing two sports. I really wanted to, but I could. Now I see the why. You know, we have to be committed to one thing and put your whole heart into it, and it just it should. What do you call it? It should ripple effect through every generation that comes through that team, and that they pass it on and pass it on and pass it on, and it becomes a a union that's strong. So yeah. Well, well congratulations on on what you have achieved with with both um, organisations, and obviously with the Black Ferns as well. We wish you luck. Fingers crossed. We see you back playing with uh, the Heat before the season's out. We obviously need a, a little bit of uh, help from, from Bo Plenty, so we'll be cheering the Volcanics on um, when they take on Wellington, but uh, other than that, yeah, go go well with the Northern Hemisphere, and we look forward to seeing you on the, on the field next year as well as we build up to the World Cup. Kia ora. Thank you so much.